Hello and welcome to the shed. In today's video, I want to revisit the, the brand new Stanley Bailey, the uh, 12-004 from the big box store. Today, I want to talk about improvements that we can make to the plane to make it function better. So the first thing I want to look at is two different things that we can do to upgrade this plane uh, in terms of performance to make it perform a little bit better. And then one thing that we can do to this plane or a couple of things that we can do to it to make it feel better in the hand and just make you want to use it more often. So the first thing I want to look at is upgrading the chip breaker, whether that is the Lubin Blaine set that has a chip breaker that you saw me review in the previous video, I'll leave that link below, or uh, a hock iron like the one I've got here, um, either of them are going to work fine for this. What I'm uh, suggesting here is that replacing just the chip breaker on the top can help stabilize the hand plane. So if we look at the brand new Stanley Bailey or any of these more modern ones, we know that the mouth is very wide and that for doing finer work, you can sometimes get a bit of vibration in the blade and also getting a little more tear out than you would like. So by replacing the chip breaker in here, it stabilizes the thin blade a little bit more and I find that it's a lot more stable when actually making the cuts. It's gonna be a little difficult for me to show you this on, on camera. Now, I know it from the feel of it and that's how I know that this actually works, but I'm gonna to attempt to film this for you and see if you can see the difference between the standard chip breaker, which works fairly well, and the new, more modern, thicker chip breaker. So let's jump in and we'll see how it goes. So going with the grain, I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a little bit of a, a, a whistle that comes off this plane when using this and it's just a little bit of vibration in the blade. So you can see there's still a little bit of ridging on these even going with the grain. If we look at these shavings when we're going against the grain, we can see that it's there's little ridges. It's got little uh, cross ridges on here and obviously against the grain you're going to get that. So we're going to do a quick change out here. that screw up a little bit because this blade is a little bit thinner. Bring it up to the same usual 1.4 mil or 1.5 mil, something like that, at the tip of the blade. So I want to come back to this piece of wood again. Now Lighten that cut a little bit. Still getting too thick a cut. We take a nice shaving here, and if we look at this shaving here, absolutely no ridging in that at all. So you can see that stabilize the blade just that little bit extra so there's no extra vibration within in that shaving. Now if I do like I did before and purposely put this against the grain try and see so against the grain we could see in the other one that there was a lot of ridging there's very little ridging on this, so you can see that it has stabilized the blade a lot better than what it was previously. Another side effect, which I noticed just now, uh, is that having a more modern chip breaker in there actually takes a lot of the backlash out of the lateral adjustment screw. So it's a lot more responsive straight away. That's why I was having a little bit of trouble getting the depth adjustment there because I was expecting the backlash that wasn't actually there. So there's very, very little backlash in that screw now. So we can see just by replacing it with a modern chip breaker, we've already removed a lot of the backlash. We've made the blade less vibratory in the, the cut and we're getting a much smoother cut and not getting anywhere near the uh, amount of vibration through the blade, which could be causing an uneven or less smooth shaving off your plane. 
So let's jump back up here and I want to talk about one other change we can make to improve it a little bit further. So what other changes can we make? And it's probably fairly obvious to a lot of you that we can actually replace the blade as well as the chip breaker. Now again here I've got the Lubin one so I'm going to go ahead and put the Lubin chip breaker and blade in. So we're going to remove the standard Stanley blade like I've got right here. So we're going to take that blade out, grab our Lubin blade that's already been prepared and again that video is below if you haven't seen it. We're going to set it up identical about 1.5 millimeters from the edge. Now that we have this blade, we have a lot more thickness. So what that's going to do, and I'm going to show you in a minute in the, once I've got it in the plane, is it's going to close the gap in the mouth up, allow you to do much finer work without that tear out. And it's going to provide a little bit of additional stability over what just the chip breaker alone can do. So let's jump in and do that. We can see that with the replacement assembly in here, that that gap has gone from maybe at three to four millimeters down to maybe one and a half, two millimeters. Now that's gonna make a remarkable difference when trying to hand plane figured woods and to help to prevent the, uh, the tear out. So I've got the, the curliest piece of hardwood that I could find here. It's a lot of reversing grain everywhere, curling around on itself, as a lot of Jarrah does. So let's jump this in the vise and see how we go. So we can hear that jumping to start with here. So we know that this was not flat. I do tend to get these smaller shavings with the Jarrah because it just tends to curl right up. It doesn't tend to take a big sh thick shaving. But you can hear from the sh sound of that that if you go a little bit slow you can get some sort of a shaving that sits on here. Now these shavings do tend to break apart. However, this is curled right up and I have almost got a full length shaving here off this Jarrah, which you wouldn't normally get with a standard blade. You may be able to, but it's going to be a lot easier with this, particularly in a plane like this. By putting the thicker chip breaker and blade in there, we're actually closing that mouth up and allowing it to operate much better even in figured woods than it would by itself without the upgrade. So we can see this is where all the cranky grain is, it's all over the place. And we're going to see how smooth we can get this. So if we look close at this, we can see we've been getting some very, very fine shavings here. And I'm just going to give you a close up of the board here. This is the area where it's really cranky and there is very little tear out here. There's a little bit where you can feel just the edge of the end grain coming the opposite way there. And you'd sand that out with some 400 grit sandpaper in no time at all if, if that was what you needed to do. Or you could bring a card scraper in here and that would disappear very quick. Now, of course, I wanted to talk about one last upgrade that you could do to this. And it's really an aesthetic thing. You can replace the handles on this plane with wooden handles over the plastic. The plastic handles are not the most comfortable. If you're going to be using this plane a lot, I find the wood is much more comfortable on my hands and that is another upgrade you can do to this, although not essential. Can transform the feel of the hand plane just that little bit extra and maybe make you reach for this hand plane if you've got more than one a little more often than your more vintage ones with the wooden handles. Now, I am planning to make some handles for a hand plane in a future video, but for now, I haven't actually got around to doing that. So for now, you could just buy your handles and put them on your plane. Or if you've picked up another second hand plane that's in a very bad condition, you could just take the handles off that and put them on this. Just bear in mind that for a number four, you want to handles 
from a number four hand plane, not a number five, because the handles are larger on a number five hand plane. As you can see there, folks, replacing just the chip breaker alone can make a difference to your plane. And although it's not a big difference, it does allow you to do a little finer work and maybe get the finish straight off your hand plane versus having to maybe sand it or use a card scraper after hand planing to remove any little ridges that form. And obviously the reason I wanted to use just the chip breaker in this was to help you guys out so you don't have to spend or show you that you don't have to spend lots of money on replacing both the blade and the chip breaker to replace the entire assembly to get a market difference in the performance of your hand plane and that just replacing the chip breaker, which is a much cheaper cost, can transform the plane in the way it operates and probably even allow you to get away with operating on some more figured grain. And if you really want the best performance, obviously replacing both the blade and the chip breaker is the way to go. But having said that, the original blade does work fairly well on this plane and I don't want you to go away thinking that I'm saying that you have to replace the, the blade assembly or the chip breaker on this plane because that's not what I'm saying. This is just to improve it, to allow you to use it on the worst of figured grain and maybe not just put this hand plane to the side and continue to use it as a daily user for even more work than what you could do with the original blade. So there you have it folks. If you like this video and you'd like to continue to support me, please click the like and subscribe button down here. It does help this video get out to more people like you so you can learn from what I'm sharing with you. And if you'd like to continue to support me a little bit further, please consider checking me out on Patreon. That's www.patreon.com forward slash Aussie Woodshed, where you get some behind the scenes content and I may answer one of your video, one of your questions in a video because you can directly ask me questions. And you can also have your name shouted out or at the end of the credits, depending on what level you subscribe at. So I also want to put a quick thank you out there to my current patrons on Patreon for your continued support. It is very much appreciated. And if you want to see another video related to this very Stanley Bailey hand plane, where I set it up and got it ready for working out of the box, please check out that video up here. And bye for now.